Don cuts across age, he cuts across geography, he cuts across economic status. I mean, you know, Don connects with everybody. Yeah. In, in business, I can tell you that there's, there's nobody that I admire more than the, the, the CEO of Cap Cities, Tom Murphy. At, uh, uh, I admire Roberto Goizueta and, and Don Keo, who retired recently, but they, they were one of the great two manager combinations in the history of business at, at Coke. They took the market value from $5 billion to uh, now $60 billion in a matter of 11 or 12 years. Philosophers have debated for centuries whether or not there's a universal human nature well i think it is, there is i simply think there is and i believe it's a very good nature his uh, ability to just make friends with anybody anywhere anytime and he means it he's not not fooling wonderful communicator and i would say once you've met him you would not forget him i started out as, after world war ii and on the gi bill and went to creighton university in Omaha, Nebraska, got a scholarship my last year from WOW. He had the slot from 12 to 12.15, and he was followed by Johnny Carson from 12.15 to 12.30. We were sponsored by our Butternut Coffee, which was a big coffee in that part of the world. I joined that company in 1950. Swanson's bought the coffee company, and then they merged it into Duncan, and of course Duncan merged into Coke. The power of that man's personality is what is, I think, his longest suit. We provide hundreds of thousands and millions of, you know, those happy little moments in people's lives. Don feels that by just giving that warm feeling toward Coke, when people walk into a store, they may not know themselves why they reach for Coke, but he thinks it's because they do feel somehow that this is a company that has some substance to it. What is happiness in a business organization? It's when an individual and the company link up their objectives. This ought to be a place where people can feel free to smile and have a good time. Doesn't mean we don't work, but I think we can have some fun doing it. Coca-Cola is integrity. It's the one product that consumers know they can always depend on. It has been an article of faith for me that I should always try to hang out with people who are better than I. There is no question that by doing so, you're moving yourself up. It worked for me in marriage and it's worked for me with Don Keo. When I'm with Don Keo, I can feel myself on the up escalator. He has an optimistic view of me and what I am to the extent that he raises my sights and makes me believe more in myself and the world around me. When you are around Don, you are learning something all the time. He's an incredible business leader the greatest achievement of good executives is to get things done through other people, not themselves. Now here is a guy who is capable of getting all kinds of people from all over the world, men and women, who want to help him succeed. I've seen him do it. Maybe it's because no one understands the human aspect of situations better than he. He can advise my kids perhaps better than I can, and they love him for that. He does the same for everyone he calls a friend, and that is a lot of people. The Graham Group, named after my mentor, Ben Graham, is a bunch of people who meet every two years or so. All my close friends, including Don, attend. Everyone wants Don to be the keynote speaker. Bill Gates, in particular, always wants it to be Don Keogh. He just loves listening to him, because Don talks such sense and offers such inspiration. Don can tell you to go to hell so wonderfully you'll enjoy the journey. He is on my board at Berkshire Hathaway because he's one of the very few guys I feel I can hand the keys over to. We go back almost 50 years together to the time we lived opposite each other on Farnham Street here in Omaha. We were just two guys making a living for our families back then. If we had told you that one of us would become the president of Coca-Cola and the other would become the head of Berkshire Hathaway, I'm sure you would have said, I hope their parents have enough money to support these two. At one point, I knocked on his door and asked him to invest $10,000 or so with me. He turned me down flat. I'd probably have turned me down back then too. Our families were great friends. The kids were always in and out of each other's houses and it was very tough on my kids when they had to move to Houston. 
there were a lot of tears the day when they moved away. It's interesting when you think of it, Don and I were living less than a hundred yards away where my future partner, Charlie Munger, had grown up. Don went to Houston, Atlanta. Charlie landed in Los Angeles. And we later reunited as close friends and business associates, all with a lot of Omaha still in us. Nowadays, of course, a lot of people say they are from Omaha for status reasons. After Don left Omaha, we kept in touch over the years. I'd meet him at the Alfalfa Club, or once we even met at the White House. Then he read an article in 1984 in which I praised Pepsi. Quote, preferably with a touch of cherry syrup in it. Quote, the next day, Don sent me their new product, Cherry Coke, and invited me to taste test the nectar of the gods. After I drank it, I told him, forget about your testing. I don't know much about that stuff, but I do know this is a winner. I switched brands straight away and immediately declared Cherry Coke the official soft drink of Berkshire Hathaway. A few years later, I started buying Coke stock, but I didn't tell Don because I felt he might have to tell the company lawyer and who knows where that would have led. I didn't want to put him in an awkward position. Anyway, he called and said, you wouldn't happen to be buying a share or two of Coke stock now, would you? I told him, it so happens that I am. At the time, we picked up 7.7% of the company. It was a straightforward decision, especially knowing that he was president. I saw Coke in 1988 as a company that understood what it was doing and was doing the right thing and was obviously enormously valuable as the result. If you wanted to invent a human personification of the Coca-Cola company, it would be Don Keogh. He was and is Mr. Coke. He's of the Ben Franklin school. Keep thy shop and it will keep thee. Basically, what he has always done is do the right thing by Coca-Cola, and he believes that will always do the right thing by him. Don's best ability is to cut to the chase in an issue, cut through the bureaucratic fog, keep it simple is his principle, and mine too. Herbert Allen says that the only two businessmen he knew who could have become president if they'd run for office were Jack Welsh and Don Keogh. I agree with that. They both had that natural brilliance. They are both people we can learn so much from. After all these years, every time I see Don Keogh, I feel as refreshed as I do after drinking a cherry Coke. He never loses his carbonation. I've seen him on the board of Coke and now at Berkshire. Don is enthusiastic and committed as ever. Full of plans, energy, ideas, daring us all to dream. I am delighted that this book will help so many other people sharing that unique Keo vision. Signed, Warren Buffett. We may fervently wish for the world to adjust its course, but the truth, of course, is that we must adjust. Let's cinch up our belts and stand tall and join hands and walk boldly into the future together. To me, Don Keogh is the ultimate American statesman. As president of the Coca-Cola Company, he had an uncanny talent for connecting with people and showing them how much he appreciated them.